as the lands between became a subject of the Golden Order and the Demigods' reign. It seemed like the land would see peace and prosper. But Rani, the Lunar Princess, thought otherwise. She was not willing to let the Greater Will and its two fingers control her fate any longer. Reichardt, as well, knew of the other Outer Gods beyond and decided to join Rani in her plans. So the two demigods consulted a secret cult called the Black Knives. The Black Knives, rumored to be Newman who had close ties with America, they sought to bring death back into order. Because only with death, people will cherish life, try their best to excel, and that death at the end of one's journey would reward them with eternal peace. This is why they sought to break the order and mend one anew with death back in its place. So the Black Knives and two demigods had a singular goal. With assistance from Reichardt, something that could give the taste of death to demigods, the very thing sealed by Malekith, Rani stole a piece of the destined death and imbued that fragment into one of the daggers of the Black Knives. If a demigod was stabbed with this god-slaying dagger, the body would be carved with the curse mark of death. And with that curse mark, Elden Ring could be mended again to bring back death once more into the natural cycle. And thus, on a deathly night with shades darker than black, Godwin the Golden was murdered. The first death under the Golden Order and the first death of a demigod. But at that moment, the most unexpected turned up in that moment of death. The curse mark of death should have been a circle, but only a half wheel appeared. The betrayal of Frani. The two fingers were canny. Their methods were elaborate in exerting their influence on things. Rani realized her body must be cast away to be free. But as an Empyrean, achieving that wasn't simple. So unbeknownst to others, she stole the other half of the curse mark. And when Goblin died, Rani was able to face death as well. Thus, with the two half marks, the two demigods died. For Rani, her body died, but her soul lived on. She had readied a doll to transfer her soul into, so she was able to be set free from the fingers. But for Godwin, his soul died and only his body lived, to enter a vegetative state with no conscience or movement. The Black Knives soon realized Rani betrayed them, but it was too late. The Royal Knights came after them swiftly, so most of them were captured or killed and the half wheel of the curse mark was lost in the process. But the half mark carved on Rani's body was well hidden to be left undiscovered to the present day. The first death of a demigod brought shock to the lands between. It was told that America was unable to handle the devastating loss and committed a sin that would never be forgiven by the will. The destruction of the Elden Ring. But her true intentions were unknown. It is still unclear if the God Queen destroyed the Elden Ring out of impulse. As more time passed, Radagon took more of America's body. And as if America foresaw all this, she had sent the Tarnished away from the lands to let them grow stronger. And since many characters that we will mention had her influence, we could say that America could have been waiting for that moment. Although her true intentions were hidden, the seemingly eternal Elden Ring was thus shattered to pieces. The Elden Beast urgently ordered Radagon in an attempt to repair the Elden Ring. 
but the pieces have already been spread across the land to become the great rooms, and each demigod claimed one shard for theirs. However, the immense powers of the runes had tainted the demigods mad. Each one stood up with their own justice and wanted to take other demigods' runes to mend the Elden Ring with a new order of theirs. The start of the Game of Thrones. The beginning of a great war called the Shattering. And of course, someone had been pulling the strings quite literally as the fingers were behind everything. Godric the Grafton, who'd been augmenting himself endlessly, took over Stormvale Castle in Limbrave, prayed to Rykart, who had disappeared, claimed Mount Gelmir. Starscourge Radon established his base in Caelid in the southeast. Mikula and Malenia grew discontent with the Golden Order of its incapability to heal the Scarlet Rot. So they had created and settled in a new great tree of their own, called Mikula's Halic Tree. And unlike the others, Rani had vanished completely. And so, the flames of war scorched the lands between. Despair and pain echoed across the land. And now, with the ring broken, the living of the lands were unable to die and be freed of pain. So their sanity has slowly faded away to become something like the undead. However, for Godric the Grafton, the shattering was an opportunity. With confidence in his powers, he had attacked Valenia. But he was defeated easily and was only spared by licking Valenia's boots in humiliation. Since Radon's army was also after his neck, he had no choice but to stay put and be immersed in grafting. The lordless royal capital, Lando, seemed like an easy prey for most demigods. But in this perilous crisis, a new figure named Morgoth, claiming to be another demigod, suddenly emerged with his face covered to defend the city from all those attacks. And people called him the Veiled Monarch, or Morgoth the Grace Given, and praised him. Meanwhile, high up on the top of Mount Gilmir, Rykar thought all of this war pathetic. This guidance of the Earth Tree to war and conquer, collect and assemble the ring sounded ridiculous. Rykar despised the fingers, the string pullers, and the greater will, the creators of a puppet god. The true god, the true culprit behind all. This contempt led Rykar to an idea of blasphemy of devouring a god, and led an abomination that devoured demigods, the god-devouring serpent, to devour him and his great rune hole to grow. Rykart became one with the serpent and deliberately started a dreadful war on the Gelmir region where many lives to fall. And then he consumed those countless fallen to prepare for that moment of God-devouring blasphemy. Around that time, Mikula had successfully planted the Halic tree in secret, but his days were in great sorrow. He spent his days burning dear Godwin's death. So in an attempt to revive Godwin's soul, Mikula prepared a ritual. But for its success, an eclipse needed to happen. But since Radon held the stars in place, there couldn't be one. Therefore, without a choice, Millennia led her army and marched to Caelid. And so, the very last battle of the Shattering, the battle of the two strongest in the lands between, took place. The Conqueror of the Stars, General Rodan. Blade 
Blade of Mikkel and the Lady of the Seven. On a hill made from dead bodies, the two demigods fought on an apocalyptic scale. But as the scales tipped against Melania's favor, she had to break Mikkel's unalloyed gold needle to unleash her true powers, the Scarlet Rock. There would be no victor. The battle declared no victor. Melania fell unconscious from exhaustion, then retreated with help from her clean rot knights. And Melania's scarlet rot began to consume Radan, causing him to slowly lose his wits. And Caelid was tainted red from the scarlet rot becoming a no-man's land. Worn out, Melania returned to the Halic Tree, only to be extremely shaken by this. The Halic Tree's roots were cut down, and Mikula inside the tree was taken away. Omen, a curse of being born with beast-like horns and tail. The Omen was most condemned of all curses, so if a baby was born with the omen, all of one's horn would be excised for them to perish. And if one of royal blood was born with the curse, their horns would be spared, but only to be imprisoned in the sewers of Lando. And one of the offsprings of America and Godfrey, Moog, was among them as well. However, Moog actually loved this wretched curse he was born with. He eventually made it out of the sewers and secretly made his way into an underground city, then established a dynasty of his own, the House of Mogwin. Then, upon searching for a god for his lordship, he found Mikula. And when Melania had gone away, he made his move, abducting Mikula. However, forcibly cut from the Halic tree, Mikula never woke from his slumber, despite all of Mog's efforts to wake him. And Melania laid her rotting, weary body to wait for her brother, hoping he would return one day. Thus, the shattering declared none victorious, and the lands between was broken. Morga, who defended Leindal until the end, became the Elden Lord, but the other demigods refused to serve him. And without a consort god, the world of the Golden Order became unstable. So the Two Fingers sought beings that could take the great runes from the Shard Bearers and re-establish the Golden Order, the ones who could do so, were the beings who lived and died as warriors outside the lands, the Tarnished. The Earth Tree gave the Tarnished the grace they had lost to let them be revived upon moment of death. And through its guidance, the air tree beckoned the tarnish back here. And thus, like what Merica had said before, to wage war and brandish the Elden Ring, the tarnished returned to the lands between. However, before the hostility of the lands and its rulers, the demigods, the tarnished were slain miserably. Thus many lost their endeavor and hope, and more and more tarnished lost the sight of grace altogether. Like so, the lands between, once shined in gold, lost its former magnificence. The lands between was broken, shattered, stripped off of the slightest hope for the longest time.
Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long-lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever-brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion. The loathsome dung eater. And Sir Gideon Othnir. The all knowing. again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Thy kind are all of a piece. Pillagers, emboldened by the flame of ambition. the burden of their grace, or be fooled by the dogmatic ramblings of the fingers. Rise with us against the Erd Drift. Never met someone with a taste for brawn or contrast. We'd make good mates for that. I bid thee travel the path of the Lord. And once all is done, we shall see each other once more. Go forth.